Hi, I'm Patricia from Trisha's Lovely Creations, and today we are going to create faux turquoise. The items that we're going to be using are Black Primo, Wasabi Primo, Turquoise Primo, Gold Primo, 18 Karat Gold Primo, Antique Gold Primo, Acro Primo, and white primo, a butter knife, your cutting blade and your tissue blade, and cutters, and gold leaf. So let's get going. Uh, before I get too far into this, I'd also like you to know that this is another one of Amy Koranek's uh, projects that she did. I'm just redoing it with some other colors and stuff and I uh, hope you enjoy it today. First we're going to need some turquoise. About a block of it. We're going to need some wasabi. better once I get mixing. That was an awful cut. There we go. Okay, about there. And I'm going to run these through the pasta machine a little bit to get them good and soft and then I'm going to mix them up. So I'll be right back. Okay, and I'm back now. And I got my clay conditioned. And then we're going to want to mix it together. Now if you want to mix it up really good, you can mix it up really good. If you want it good and marbled, you can mix it up good and marbled. I don't know if you can see this real good, but here's one of mine that I did. And it's kind of marbly. And I did a, another test piece last night, adding more of the different golds to see what it would look like. And I think it came out nicely, but you can see there's still some of the turquoise and the white mixed in there really good. So either way you want to mix it, it's up to you. But I think I'm going to use the pasta machine for this too. <laughs> I'll be right back. Alrighty, and I'm back. I got it mixed up, but not completely mixed in there. If you can see that, I don't know if you can see it very well. But you can still see some of that turquoise and that shining through there. Nice and marbly. I'm just going to make this into a little block. Yummy. I like to roll it out into a little log. There, it's flopping away from me. It says, no! Don't chop me up. But you're going to be chopped up. Okay. Now for the golds. Room. Okay. There we go. Now we're just going to chop that all up. Yeah, it's coming flying at me. Just does not want to be chopped up.
that should be good. Okay, make that into a nice pile, just like we did on the lapis. Okay, there we go. And now we're going to put out our gold leaf. That's gold leaf. I really do. I don't know how I was ever living without it. Just to cover it up with our black. And I'm going to roll that out on the POTS machine on a setting 4, I do believe is what I want. And I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. And I'm back. Alright, so I rolled my black clay out on the POTS machine on a setting 4. And I just like take and stretch it and make sure it's all going to fit over it. i just put that on there. Press down. Make sure we get it stuck real good. Alrighty. I think that does it. So I'm just going to trim the edges off. the fun of cutting into it. Okay, now for the fun part. Seeing how beautiful it turned out. Ooh, look at 
that. It's so nice. I love it. Came out really good. I like both sides. They look good. Come out really good. I'm pleased. All right. Well, now let's get our scrap clay out and make some beads. Okay, and I got my scrap clay rolled out on a setting uh, six, I do believe, is what I rolled it out on. And because I want to make slightly bigger beads, so I've also gotten a, a bigger cutter today, along with the small one, because I like doing both. So. I'm going to squish these down a little bit further, get rid of some of the black, and I'm making some beads. Cut some out. <coughs> Pardon me. Not very good. No, can't do that. <laughs> All right, there we go. I didn't squish those down yet. thin already so I think we're good on those. Oops, not there. You go away. I'll do that while I'm here. 
It's got some gold on it there. Okay, I think that's good. Set that aside. Start with a big one. Mm, I think I want to take that down a little smaller. Give me just a minute, I'll get that. Okay, on back. And it kind of distorted it doing that though. Darn it. Try to take the best part of it anyways and make it work. So I got my stuff moved down to the basement, so no more fan noise, no more TV noise, so let me know if it's better. Now that we don't have the annoying noises going on. I think I'm even staying in camera better this time. Do you believe? Okay. And I would call that one covered. There we go. go this way and that way. Don't want them to get swirly. Pretty. And I got things sitting on my pan. That's not good. Okay. There's one down. Just pick a pretty spot and wrap it around. Sorry, concentrating again. <laughs> I get quiet. I know. Sorry about that. Okay, there we go. I'll cover it up. One way and then the other. <coughs>
this one. Much done with that. I think I'm gonna put on my finger coats and turn this one into a square. Okay. We're just gonna turn this into a square. much easier with the bigger ones than it is the little one. I like my corners to be rounded. Patience. Get a nice square. There we go. I think we got a winner. Beautiful. Okay, I guess in our last big one here. Let's see, I'll just throw some of that on there. Got that nice part with the gold there. Tore too much off of that one. That's okay. Put this one on there. Oops. Tore that one a little bit too soon. Cover it up at the end. It's okay. Come on. There we go. Sorry, didn't mean to make everything shake there. <laughs> didn't realize my leg was rushing against the desk. Okay, beautiful. Okay, I'm making another square.
Okay, I think we have us another winner. Beautiful. Okay, here we go. Covering up the small ones. color in there. Ah, darn it. Put too much away from that one. Make sure that it's all covered. Here we go. Our little bowl, we're gonna make us a flat one, flat round one. And just like the other one, just slowly work it. Oh, I lost that one. <laughs> okay, I think it looks good. Now that's another winner. bit bigger. Okay. A little bit bigger than I wanted to. Covered here. I do believe we are.
Okay. Kind of pinching around. Pinching around. Take your time. Nothing but does a better job than patience. Which I've had to learn the hard way. Yeah, this is definitely a little bit bigger. And that's okay, I don't mind them in all different sizes. That was a winner. Okay. Alrighty. Flatten that out a little more. Don't want to work today. I'm going to do these last two and just, just round one. Beautiful. Okay. Last one to cover. I think I want to get some of this gold up in here.
Not a football shape. We don't want that. Okay, and my beads are done baking, and I just wanted to show you something really quick. As you can probably see, there's a huge difference between this set of beads and this set of beads that I had previously done before. I'll take them out of the packet so that you can see them better. Okay. Now, as I was saying, you can see a difference between these and these. Um, I think my color on these were much lighter. I didn't mix it as much. There was a lot of the white and the blue still showing through. You can see that one. Still focusing in on the background there. Trying to make it focus on it. There it goes. You can see how swirly it is. Oops. Now I lose it. There you go. That's still kind of swirly. And not much of the black. I, I took and I shaved off the black on the outside edge. And so there wasn't much. Not a whole lot of black. And I had used, um, which one is it? Burnt Umber, I think. Let me double check that. Okay, I had used uh, raw sienna in the mixture, but you can see there, come on, focus, there you go, you can see there, and you can see, I had black in that one, not much though, but you can see, depending on how you do it, you're going to come out with very different effects. I mean, I like this one, but I love this one, too. Okay, now it's time to drill my holes, and I will let you sit and see how I do this. Let's start with my bigger beads.
take and I'm going to shellac them in my pledge so I get them hung on my wire. I always like to put two at the bottom so that the last bead ain't so caked with all the dripping from the other ones. So the, my little loop down here catches most of it and these two beads here. And I found it's better to do about four to five beads at a time instead of a whole bunch of them. And that way that last bead's not so cakey. I guess. It's livable. I can live with that. go on that one. Okay, and now I'm just going to show you how I do it. I have my pledge in a, a clear cup so I can see where it's at. And uh, I'm going to dip the beads in. I just dip it in, swirl them about, and I take some off. Now swirl it again. And that's all I do. And then hang it up to dry. Okay, and while that dries, I'd like to show you some other beads I've done. And I think I might have shown you Tiger Eye in the last video. Well, the part one of the last video. But I can't remember, so I'm going to show you again. <laughs> uh, this is just the uh, Gold Tiger Eye. And I got some of the uh, the sample ones I did of the uh, turquoise the other night with more of the uh, mi more mixture of clays in there, different colors. I was doing a test and chopping it up real fine to see how it went. And I like it either way, whether it's real fine or or chunky. Either way works for me. Let me just take these off of here. And then I have something else to show you. I'll set it to the side for now. Alright. And here's some tiger eye. Let's see that. There we go. Love how shiny they came out. They look really good. We'll be doing some of those shortly. 
then we got these that we just did today these were my test ones which like I said well that I had chopped them up real little so be it little pieces or big pieces they still come out really nice no matter which way you do it and then I got these here that I did and I believe that they are a type of blue jasper um, if you like them let me know they got little gold flake in them looks really pretty but if you like these beads and would like to do them let me know in the comments below